Hi, everyone. Work's over. It's wine o'clock, and this is what's going down in the PM. We are your hosts, Julene and Nietzsche, and we've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about the client wall of shame like we promised we would. And of course, it's brought to you by us, the hostess with the mostest. And of course, mom is always right, Media Inc. I think while the client wall of shame is funny, we should also probably talk about do's and don'ts of hiring a freelancer or going through an agency. Well, the first thing we need to talk about is knowing exactly what you want. And if you don't know exactly what you want, you need to make it clear. Don't be afraid to ask for what you want. Because, see, you can't, we are not mind readers. We do the best we can. We'll accommodate you as best we can. But our, we are two different people. And because you have a team of writers, you may have a whole team whose di- visions are different. So if our vision doesn't line up with yours, you can't be afraid to tell us. Exactly. And don't wait until the end or don't wait until the middle of the project because at the end of the day, you're hindering your own process as well. Exactly. I mean, and some some clients are like the like the biggest violators of this rule. And I feel like if they would have just spoken up, they would like avoid almost all of this. People who don't know what they want are kind of like the customer equivalent of that picky eater, the significant other, where you're like, oh, what do you want to eat? And then they tell you, oh, I don't know, pick anything. Like, am I right? Have you yeah. ever had, yeah, have you ever had like a boyfriend or girlfriend that was like, oh, you know, I don't know, just pick whatever. And then you're just like, okay, so how about a burger? And they're just like, no, I don't feel like that. What about some tacos? I don't feel like that either. Pizza? Although I will never in life suggest pizza. Not out here. Oh, not in California because it ain't it, sis. No. Oh, my God. I miss pizza from back home so much. No, that nothing compares to that New York pizza. Like, that brick oven pizza or, like, I love how in every kind of, like, restaurant in New York when it comes to pizza, they make it different. But it's not, like, once you go somewhere else, it's just different. Like, it's not the same. Well, anywhere outside of the city, I feel, is just not, it's not hitting. Because if you think about, like, and I am team, I am team Crunchy Crust. Right, you know, exactly. That's what I was Yeah, saying. you, you mm-hmm. take it out of the brick oven, and you know you fold it in half. If you don't hear the crunch, it's yep. not made correctly. It's not correct. Because I know, like, some people like it doughier. But that's not no. It has to, like you said, it has to have that that right crunch, that right that right sound needs to hit. Exactly. Like you know what? Like, subscribe, and comment us and tell us how you enjoy your pizza. Are you team deep dish? Are you team crunchy? Thin crust. That, ooh, I don't like it too thin though. Too thin though. Like I think that that's that's that that ain't at all. Like that's not hitting. Yeah, like the thin crust is not cool. But that perfectly, that perfect thickness, fresh out of a brick oven. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Like, yes. Period. But, period. But if we out here in California, you will never hear me say, let's get pizza. It's not, it's not. That's not the move <laughs> over there. But I think what Julian is saying is that um, it's like we can even give it to, um, go back to comparing it to kind of like ordering pizza, like. We're like, okay, so do you want thin crust pizza? Do you want oven? Like, do you want deep dish? Are you thinking about having a Sicilian, like, freshing it up, make it a little spicy? You don't know what you want. And then they're like, yeah, I don't know. And then it's whatever you want. And I come back with, like, a grandma pizza or something. Or, and they're like, that's cool, but that's not, that's not what I wanted. Or, like, I think that's so nice of you, but. That's not what I was thinking about. Yes. Like, don't be passive aggressive. Just tell us what you need. Let us know what you need. We are all about customer service. We will definitely get the job done. And while there are, we do not offer refunds, we do offer unlimited revisions because if it's not right, we'll make it right. Yeah, because we want to make sure we are, it's your vision that we're making a reality. It's about it's about the client. It's about the services they paid for and making sure they get the quality that they deserve. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. And then and that and that speaks to like, you know, like I'm gonna refer back to food again. Mm-hmm. If I cut, if I come back with, you know, if I tell you to get whatever, and right. you bring me back a California pizza, I can't be mad at you for bringing me that because right. I told you to bring me whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Or if like I am, yeah. One perfect example for that because we have to go into the client wall of shame. Um, is Miss Passive Aggressive. Um, yeah, she didn't have a clear idea of what she wanted, or she did have, I feel like she did have a clear understanding of what she wanted, but um, she had an unclear, expect, an unrealistic expectation. And it is all good and well to not understand our process or not understand the product or the service that we're offering, but it is our job to make it clear to you. But um it's just we have to we have to be communi- we both have to communicate as a client and as a and as a, cl- a c- client and as the person you are hiring you can't be upset if it wasn't a clear communication on both ends and if we already told you the process it just can't um it can't change you know that goes back to our other do do know the process of the service yes. that you're asking for Right. If you've hired us for a grant service, just know registrations alone for your SAM registration is a two to four week process. Right. And if your expectation is to get a federal grant, guess what? You're going to have to wait that two to four weeks. Right. Asking, asking me Stewie style, where's my money, is not going to make the process it any faster. Exactly. exactly. So, you know, just definitely. Or, and it- and it going back to the passive aggressive, I mean, in, in that in that scenario where he's like, you have to have my money in 24 hours, and he comes back and it's not there. Stevie was, I'm pretty sure, very clear, especially when he got that freaking um, pipe and started hitting him with it. Don't be, um, well, I have some, like, you have to be, be clear on what you want. Like, you, you can have an unclear expectation of, or unrealistic expectation, but don't be, like, politely saying, like, where is the money? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want to know where your money is. You tell me, where's my money? Don't be like, yeah, thank you so much. But I don't, thought this and I thought that. Like, Don't do oh. we us with a smile. From right. now on, when people are, when people are like, where's my money, Brian? Where's my money, Nietzsche? Where's my money? From now on, we're going to say that we're stewing that. Don't stewie us with a smile on your face. Right. If you want to know, ask. If you need clarification on the process, ask. Right. We'll definitely, we have no problem answering any questions that you have. We have an open door policy, but let me tell you something. The door that is not open is my home door. Do not call me at home. Do not message Diamond. me on my personal email. Diamond like, agrees with you on that. Exactly. See, you're gonna get Diamond upset with you. If right. You, do you don't want things. that. You hear that? You, you no. Yeah, she, 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 she means she means she, business. Diamond got my back. Right. So, Riley. Yes. They're like, Diamond they're and the, Riley. They're the other dynamic duo. Yes. So on the other side of the passive aggressive, you know, we have 100 percent aggressive. Right. And that's the other don't. Don't call me at home. Don't email me on my personal email. If you have a num have my number from a different site or a previous mm-hmm. Zelle transaction, do not. And I like I'm saying it a second time because it's important. Do not call me at home. If you know, if mom is always right media, writing agency has fallen short in some way, do go through the prom- proper channels to communicate this. Like via email on the work email like I really just feel like maybe like people don't seem to understand that Diamond (laughs) Diamond, now now you're doing too much (laughs) she's doing a lot no it's okay I'm team Diamond it's all right Diamond people don't seem to understand that you I understand like if you've paid us for a service that's fine. What you paid right. is for us to perform the service. What you didn't pay for is an all access pass. So if it's at eight o'clock at night, my time, 11 or midnight, your time, and you've messaged me, I promise you, you will not okay. get an answer. I, mean, I have office hours. 
Exactly. Okay. And give it, even if you communicate with me during office hours, it does not give you the right to um to talk to talk to anyone without respect. Definitely. Do maintain professional boundaries mm-hmm. and be respectful. Exactly. Man- maintain those professional boundaries. I we understand if we fall short, we're going to do our job to make it right. We're going to make corrective action. But you do not have to speak to someone like they're less than or speak to them in a manner to make like I understand you're upset but I am human and we're talking about right now because in the wall of shame we're talking about petty wop because she she it's important to go through professional boundaries and and we are all and also to respect me and respect my who I respect me as a person you can be upset but don't make me feel like I need to cry after I speak with you Oh my gosh! Isn't isn't Miss Pet Miss Pettywop the one that um she she emailed me at home and she right. called me at home right. and that was like after you called me crying like oh, what I'm happened upset. did you did you give it yeah did you give her my number or not know. my number no no you didn't give her my number or she she emailed me she and has then, your personal email. I don't know how. I guess from the beginning transactions between you um, as a client. Mm. Um, I don't know how she got your number, though. When you told me she kept calling, what had happened was is she called me and she said she was trying to reach you. But when I answered, she happened to call me on the office number. And I answered. And, and I was like, she was like, is this you? And I'm like, no, it's me because I'm the operations manager. And I run the office, like, and she was already upset at that point. And I would just say from that converse, from that point in the conversation to the last, like, 15 minutes, she was yelling at me. Yeah, that's another don't. Don't yell at my staff. That's not cool. Mm-hmm. You know, like, if you go through the proper channels, like, a lot of people think, oh, no, she's the CEO of the company. She right. doesn't read. She doesn't care. Oh, you can ask any one of my staff. I read each and every one of those emails and I address each and everything good and bad. Like, trust me, we love our clients. Like, right. There's, we want, we want to see your dream come true. That's our whole stick. We, we want, we want everybody to, you know, achieve their, their goals. So obviously, you know, we're, if we fall short, we're going to want to correct it as soon as possible. Which brings me to the next do. Do communicate with us regularly and understand that you have a team. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times people are really surprised when they call the office. They call the office. Oh, yeah. And then they're like, is this Julene? I'm the CEO and founder of the company, so I'm not always available. I'm I'm busy bringing bringing you productions like... It goes down in the PM or coffee after dark. Um, we're launching Meow Me Reads, the digital newspaper. So I'm not always going to be available to answer the phone for the writing agency, too. We have, um, shout out to Stephanie. We, ha- we have our projects manager who answers the phone, and she she manages all the projects. She makes sure all our writers are hitting the deadlines. We're, we're a full-on team, guys. Right. So, you know, don't be surprised when you call and, you know, I'm I'm not there. Don't get upset. We're not bouncing you around. We're all just working as a team to make your dreams come true. Exactly. That's that's what we are, like I said, at our core. Okay, Diamond and Riley really agree with us today. I know. Riley was just barking. I, did, yes, I, 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 I always say it like, I feel like they have a whole conversation with each other They're when like, we're yeah. talking. Yeah, they need to respect them. They need to respect their mothers. Right? And it's like it's like the Riley and Diamond takeover. Right. <laughs> right. It's always in the middle of our conversation. Like they can't wait until like that we no, can but they, they, have, they have something to say, all right? You can't be yeah. mad at them for that. We give platforms to those who are silent, so Yes, we Speak. we amplify silence right. voices. So I think if they feel oppressed, we will give them a platform to speak. Exactly. So um, this oh is my your moment. God! Speaking of people amplifying voices, do did you hear that uh, the notorious R B G passed? Oh, yep, I did, and we spoke about it on um, both on our um, blog and our Instagram. 
Yeah, I did that. I wrote um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg a letter. You like, did, and it was powerful. I I was absolutely heartbroken when she passed. Like, yo, she is the reason, like, we are even here. Like, ladies, this woman stepped into a courtroom and fought for equal pay, our right to bodily autonomy. This woman is amazing. How how many people do you know affect that many lives in one lifetime? Exactly. She is the Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall of her of the feminist movement. She has made such strides as in the fight for equality. And it's incredible. It's sh- really. And like, honestly, she she reminds us all that we need to accept better. You know, like the closing the pay gap and all of that. She is she is the reason like this woman was the one dissenting voice among her male colleagues so many times. Did you read that story about her and her Harvard professor? No, I didn't. What happened? Dude. Okay. So first of all, her and like nine other women were going to Harvard, right? So the Dean of Harvard gathers them up in a meeting and says, can you justify why you've taken this position from a man? I would cry. Mm. Like, right. I would literally cry. Be like, did the dean of students just ask me that? And she would be like, well, I'm well qualified and there is no need for me to be explaining myself to you. I'm more, I am as qualified or more qualified than the man that I, t- oh, that I supposedly took this from. Men have the opportunities and I and simply women do not. The man will have a job tomorrow. So let me have this one. Like I'm this is my opportunity. I'm yes. not taking any type of opportunity away from a man that has countless opportunities opportunities daily. Yeah, and you know what's crazy too? Like she didn't even she didn't even aggressively argue her point. She didn't say, I took it because I belong here. Mm-hmm. You know what she said? She said Well, I think it's a good idea for any woman to understand what her husband does for a living. And, like, her husband was very supportive of her through Mm -hmm. this whole thing. Right. I mean, I'm, like, I was blown away when I heard that story. I can't imagine sitting in the classroom and having the dean of students tell me I had to justify my presence there. Exactly. That's crazy. I know. And then, like, all this stuff that they're talking about, like, whether or not they should replace her before or after the election. Like, her, the woman's dying wish was to not be replaced until after the election. So, simply meet her wish or comply to her wishes. See, and that's, well, that's the thing. The Constitution says, you know, like they have a choice according to the Constitution. They don't have to fulfill her last wishes. I mean, it's a nice thing to do, but it's not required. Right. The issue a lot of people are having is when um, Judge Scalia passed, they wouldn't let Obama replace him because he had 11 months left to his term. That's crazy. And, well, here's the thing. Trump has, like, 45 days left before the election. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, they're going back and forth about why is it that we had to wait 11 months to fill Scalia's seat, but you guys can't wait 45 days to fill Ruth Bader Ginsburg's seat. Exactly. What is, like, what is their argument on doing it now? Oh, because they say it. They can't wait. That seat can't remain empty for that long. What? Right? Not even logical. But Scalia's seat could remain empty for 11 months, though. That's insane. Isn't the Supreme Court justice the ones that um, decide if um, a law being broken is constitutional or unconstitutional? Yes. So for 11 months, they out here with one less person to decide the fate of a law? Yes. But here's the other thing, too, that's wild, right? So, <laughs> for when it came to Scalia, they wouldn't they wouldn't let Obama fill the seat for 11 months. Now with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, they're pushing it and it's a strategic move because right. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a liberal voice and right. I be- and I believe they have mostly conservatives 
And then the ones that usually break the tie is like your um, independents. Mm. Now, if they get a conservative judge in there, then the conservatives will have the Supreme Court, they have the Senate, and but they don't have the House yet. So this election, we are going to see, oh, and conservative Republicans also have the White House. So let's say we let's say they they do push a conservative judge into Ruth Bader Ginsburg's seat. Then what's going to happen is the conservative the Republican or the conservative sect will have the Supreme Court. They'll also have the Senate, and then and if they flip the House, then they're gonna have all the branches of government. They're gonna have executive, legislative, and and the judicial. That's and the, crazy. Yeah, so that's, that's wild, right? That is wild. And I was thinking, like, when I originally asked you, I feel like Diamond agrees that this is very wild. But um, what I was at, what I what I was really wondering was, do they have someone in mind? Because they want to push someone so badly into the, the seat. Yeah, they have this lady in mind. Um, I forgot her name, but she's also a conservative lady, too. She's like a she's like an older conservative lady, and I think the fact that they're picking a conservative woman, um, I think they're gonna they feel like we're gonna be more receptive to that. I see. So, you know that I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the world today, but I think. If if they if the Democrats don't hold on to the House, then it's going to be like we're we're going to have like a conservative. You're gonna start looking at a more conservative America. Wow. I mean, and to each his own. Honestly, I'm just like, do you just let me do me? And, right. You know, believe what you want. Just let me believe whatever I want to. Exactly. Yeah, like a like a what what's it called like a live and let live kind of situation. Yep, exactly. But I don't know, man. Oh my god, we totally got off topic. <laughs> we really did, but you know, like it wouldn't be it goes down in the PM if we didn't. I know we basically just talk about whatever. Exactly, like we do have a structure though. Yeah, we, we do. Promise. We have a, we have like a basic structure, but we definitely go. <laughs> we we you know, go. I think I have the best segue for this. Let me not butcher this. You know okay, how you okay. said it's live and let live. One thing that we shouldn't let live is weird behaviors like stalking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yeah, that is the best way, best segue back on topic. Right. Okay, so what were we talking about? about? Oh, calls at home. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. And so it was shame and professional boundaries. Yes. So, uh, oh my God. The I'm good. Other right? candidate, yes. Like, I know you didn't go there. The next <laughs> candidate for the client wall of shame is the stalker. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Tune in after the break and I'll tell you all about my stalker. And we're back with part two of episode three, It Goes Down in the PM. So Hi. before the break, we were talking about the stalker. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. So I don't know if it's fair to put the stalker on the client wall of shame, but I feel like because she definitely tried to catfish me, she can really just go up there. She did. She tried to... As a way to get in contact with you, she posed as a client. So technically, she technically. belongs on the client wall of shame. True, true. Honestly, the stalker actually started off as an employee. And, well, she conned her way as an employee. In truth, she, I posted a, a, an open position for a writer. And she applied to it, but under false pretenses. Like... She really applied under a false name. She gave me a false address. And then I started noticing little things. Like, she read all my work. And don't get me wrong, like, I really, I really appreciate true fans. I do. Right. And the research you do when you want to apply to a job is important. But she definitely took it a little too far. Too far, bro. She was referencing stuff that got published when I was 15 years old. Which, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, I read it, it's all good if you really enjoyed my work 
and you you know you have a copy of that magazine and you wanted to just show me some love like that's cool that's not creepy at all but the fact that like it wasn't just that like she referenced like stuff i would put up you remember on myspace when they had like the little live journal things no oh my okay so see you guys have it good cuz back in my day they you had to like when when you wanted to decorate your little MySpace thing, you actually had to know the codes. Like you 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 had to actually go and find like videos or pictures of like falling stars and then like copy the code out of it and then put it into your MySpace so that your MySpace would have like falling falling hearts and then like you know, you, you put oh, yeah, my space yes, with the, with the I song. Think you said Facebook at first. So I'm like, I don't remember no journals on Facebook. No, MySpace. It, okay, got you. I know what you mean. Because yeah, you had your own page and then you yeah. had, yes. Yeah, one, once upon a time, long ago, during a faraway time, when internet was just born, there was a website called MySpace where everyone was friends with a man named Tom. And they yes. all were expert coders. <laughs> yes. You, you remember how, like, in, in order to just be, have a legit MySpace, you know, you had to really know what to do. Like, really know yeah. how to code. Yeah, because you had to have music on there. You had to know who. You had to have your top five friends showing. For real. And you remember when, when you, if you took someone out of your top, it was serious. Like, oh, I know. It was like fighting on sight. For real. Like, they, oh, no. You took me out of your top. Oh, we were fighting immediately. We are not cool. You don't get to sit at the cool people table anymore. Why? You took me out your top. You know that I just Googled MySpace and it's still a thing. It's still a thing? No, it's not. But, like, it's a news site. What? No, we you got some know... competition over here. Oh, my God. No, you know what's crazy? Like, there was a time where I had, like, 10 MySpaces because mm-hmm. I had, I didn't, I, like, it's not a legit addiction, but, dude, I could not stop playing Mobsters for the longest time. You remember that game, Mobsters? No. Okay, so <laughs> there was this game where you created, like, your character and then you had to wait a certain amount of time to level up and stuff like that. And, like, the thing about mobsters is, like, the more the more MySpace profiles you have, the more mobster profiles you can have. Um, and, like, the more, <laughs> the more people in your mob, like, the more you can, like, attack someone. When really all it was was just, like, clicking, clicking, like, attack to, like, fight. And then you could build up your mobsters to be, like, a strong attack, a weak defense, or whatever. And then... Then they had like this hit list, and like the hit list was cool because you make mad money if you created a mobster that was just all about like that was just all attack and no defense, right? Right. And then it was cool until people started creating uh bots. Oh, what happened? Like hit list bots. So it's like a bot that would just keep refreshing the hit list or keep attacking on the hit list until they won. Oh, so they're cheating. They can't be fair. Like, I just want to play my mobsters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they cheated the whole game. And then I was like, I don't know. After like a year of that, I was over it. Like, I saw, I started dating a dude, and he was like, "Yo, I looked you up on MySpace. Um, I don't know. I think you're kind of weird. You have like eleven of them." I was like, "No, it's not even like that." <laughs> Did you not like use a different name each time? Yo, no, I had like the same name. It was like all different <laughs> versions of the name Julene. <laughs> been like I'm um, Sarah Marshall. Um, no, no, like I wanted to be like I think uh, what it was was I um I made it I made my name you know like you know Jimmy the Tulip. I made my say Jimmy the Tulip. <laughs> I can't, yo. Like, yo, you was famous on, on MySpace for having 12 different profiles. <laughs> I, had like, I had, like, a million of them. It was craziness. <laughs> and, like, and, like, and, you know, it takes, like, that one thing that someone says to make you realize what a freaking weirdo you are. 
We were like, oh, yeah, you're kind of right. It's, it's kind of odd having 12 profiles. <laughs> it's like, you know? like, and it just seemed normal because you know what? Like, I keep my... <laughs> I just I can't get was... over you didn't use a different name for each. <laughs> I like did. when you told me like you had like 12 different profiles. I thought you were like you had your main one and you were like, okay, I'm going to play mobsters. So today I'm Sarah Marshall. But no, nah, you <laughs> said I'm Jem the Tulip. <laughs> no, and like like for for like the new ones, I call it like my, I call it the, <laughs> uh, the baby tulip account. And then I was like... <laughs> But like after Wait, like, did you have like twelve different emails? I did. I did. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, mobsters is not that serious. You know, but I'm telling you, like gameplay, online gameplay is real like that. Like you feel bad, especially like you ever had those um heard of those kids with the World of Warcraft things? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's a, like, you know, some people really sit there and play and not use the bathroom, and they'll really sit there and piss themselves to continue nah. playing World of Warcraft. No, that's crazy. Like, seriously, like, oh my god. So, it, like... You said this is a community. Don't mess with my community <laughs> of mobsters. <laughs> exactly. I was, like, deep in it, too, because I already kept my circle of friends really close. Right. I, like... I had, like, one solid friend that would come by and then, like, another one that lived across the country at the time that would call and check on me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really, like, I had a really good, like, I had a good support system and everything. But the truth is, it's like, I wasn't really fit to interact with other people at the time. So the only other friends I had were people online. (laughs) I felt that. I used to be obsessed with Tumblr and Twitter. Tumblr and tw- what's Tumblr? Oh no. Well, Tumblr, I would say, I want to say it's like my generation's MySpace. Like you had a blog and then you could like, I had about 12 Tumblrs too, so I really can't, <laughs> like can't judge you. But um, you can write on it. You can post, like repost people's pictures. Um, you can interact with people. Like, obviously, that's a social media site, but I was obsessed with it, like, nine hours a day obsessed. Oh, my God. And did it connect to your phone, too? I think so. Oh, Oh, that's even worse. Like, I'm telling you, I was on it. I was on Twitter. I was obsessed with Twitter when it first came out. Oh, my God. See, that's crazy. Like, I couldn't... um, Back when I was back in my day, okay. I swear they're gonna come out with a drinking. Uh, it goes down in the PM drinking game. Take a shot every time Julian says "back in my day." <laughs> every time she says "canceled," <laughs> yes, canceled. <laughs> exactly. You just got drunk. Yes. No, I like back in the day, like they you couldn't play those games on the phone. Like I don't even know if they had like a MySpace app for the right. phone. Right. But I know for a fact you couldn't play mobsters on the phone. Otherwise I really might have left my house more. But well, I was having a problem with with PTSD anyway. There was there were a few grocery store incidents that I'm not too proud of. <laughs> what happened? Okay, first of all, well, what had not happened? The first of all, she said, first of all, let me get my story straight. <laughs> what had said, happened was what happened was no. Okay, so when I was in the military, there was a time to do everything. Like there was a time to go to the bathroom. There was a time to smoke, work out, go to work. There was a time for everything. And then, like, right in boot camp, they'll be like, okay, we're going to take you to the commissary. And then you, they'll, they'll tell you, go, go, go. You got five minutes, five minutes. When I got out, I went to the grocery store. And I'm telling you, I would be triggered every time I walked into a grocery store, right? Uh-huh. First of all, the, the aisles in a grocery store are not that great. They're really kind of narrow. You want right. to you want to get your stuff and you want to go you want to sit here and have entire conversations with people you just want to go right so while in a grocery store you know 
I might have gotten a little bit triggered because I wanted to get by and there was a lady in the pasta aisle on the phone going, you know, I don't know. I might just, I don't know. Do you want pasta tonight? I kind of want pasta tonight, but I'm not sure. What do you think? See, they got the herb pasta, garlic pasta, the meat marinara sauce. Like she really ran down. I felt like I was in an episode. I was in the the Forrest Gump movie, except with pasta. Like she was reading all of them. I'm and good. you know, finally, I was like super triggered, and I was like, "Hey, can you figure that like out of the aisle or get the f out the way? I really just want this spaghetti so I can go." And, and you know. It's true. It might have been a little bit rude. I'm sad. <laughs> Guys, PTSD is not always just breaking down and dissociating. It's extreme irritability. It could be claustrophobia. It could be all of that. So, you know, the fact that the aisle was small, this woman was having an entire conversation, and I was starting to have a panic attack because... There was a shopper behind me. I couldn't turn around and leave. And then this woman was blocking the aisle. Not only that, I mean, PTSD set aside. Dude, it's super rude. It is rude. I was just about to say that. Like, why are you, if you can't even get out, like, you're in the middle of something. And she's like, so do you want garlic pasta? (laughs) Meat pasta? It was crazy. And then, like, then I got to the register. That's one thing about California. That's different from back home. When when back home, when we go to the grocery store or wherever, we just get our stuff. If the cashier even looks at us, it's to tell us how much our stuff is. Right. Exactly. Oh my God. They really don't be looking at you. They barely even greet you. And if it right. if it is like one of those distant Hi, how you doing? Thank you for right. shopping at fill in the blank. I don't I'll- even get the thank you for shopping at Key Food. Like <laughs> Yo, I out, can not, not even know where I'm shopping at. Out here, they actually have entire conversations with you. Like, you walk in and they say, hi, miss, how are you doing? And if you don't respond, they'll say it louder because they think they didn't tell you. Like, you just didn't hear them. Oh, wow. Like, I looked up. I was like, oh, you're talking to me? I'm good. Oh, oh um, this is what's happening right now? Oh, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm good. Thanks. I didn't know what to do. I felt bad. (laughs) Listen, you're just not accustomed to, like, manners. I'm just not accustomed to be treated right. To be treated right at the store. (laughs) It's just not what we're used to. Seriously. But then, check it. So, the other grocery store incident, when I came home from deployment, I went up and I I get to the counter, right? And I'm waiting in line to pay. And this one, I believe this was still on the East Coast. This was uh, at like a stop and shop. Mm -hmm, And I mm -hmm. get in the line and this woman, like, I'm going to have a, she's not ringing her out. It's like, um, it was, uh, it was so crazy. Like I got there and she was like, oh, well, oh, what's going on? Hey, how are the kids? This, that, and the third. Oh, no ground beef today. Oh, you know, you know, Sandy loves that cereal. And they had like. This long conversation. And of course, someone comes behind me. A second person comes behind me. I'm I'm starting to feel that pressure on my chest where I just feel like I cannot breathe. And then mm-hmm. there's a person in front of me having an entire conversation with the cashier about the kids, the grandkids, the dog. How the dog had to go back to the veterinary hospital. And I turn around and I was like, yo, do you have her number? Can can y'all text each other? I really want to go. All right, exactly. Like, <laughs> as you should. Excuse me, I had a... Ooh. But you were like, I got to... I gotta go, so you gotta move this faster. Thank you. Seriously, and like, like, like I said, so you know, I was on line on like Live Journal and stuff like that, and because I really don't feel like I was ready for human interaction, like I didn't. If you would have told me that ten ten years later or twenty, like I would own a major like a media company, you know, be online and and you know write about like. Uh, issues with PTSD, autism. I would have told you you're a liar because I, I am really like freaked out by people. Like I have anxiety. Aww. But yeah, like like I've come a really long way. And then now 
like 10, 13 years later, here I am and I have a stalker. I finally, you, you know, I feel <laughs> feel safe enough to leave my house. Yes, and, and now you have someone who's trying to cut those boundaries and make you feel more anxious. Seriously. Like, okay, so <laughs> she she applied here under a false name. She uh, she applied here with a false address. She knew all my previous work, which I attributed to her just just doing her homework about me, right? Mm-hmm. Come to find out, no, she's a fan. She knows she's, like, excited about all my written work. I was like, oh, okay, you know what? I'll forgive that. And then when I found out, like, she applied under, like, a false name or whatever, she just said, you know, I'm embarrassed about where I'm from or what my, you know, my my actual name is. So, you know, I was like, okay, but your paperwork has to have your real name on it. You right. know, your your tax paperwork has to have your real name on it and your real address. And I will allow you to write under a pseudonym because we're a writing company. I figured, what the heck? Right, 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 what the heck? Mm-hmm. When she violated our non-compete and we termed her, she would send me messages like, oh, how was your family camping trip? And did you catch anything? And I'm over here like, how did she find me? Like, like at that point, you she was um not on your end. She was blocked on everything. Yes, because she would call my house number, the office number. She would call. She would call my cell phone. She would call me from different numbers. Yeah, she would. And I could like feel myself starting to have like a weird panic attack. So right. finally, I just I blocked her on everything, and I said, and I told you. You know, Nietzsche, you know, like, you have to deal with her from now on because she is, right. like, she's stalking me and it's weird. Exactly. Exactly. So you were, like, uncomfortable. You're getting uncomfortable. And then you went on a trip, like, and you went on your, the camping trip. And then I didn't even realize this. She sent an email to you via another email and was, like, how's your trip going? No one, like, on my end, no one told her. Like, how did she know? She's, like, not part of the organization anymore, the agency. Exactly. Like, how does she even know? Mm-hmm. Honestly, um, my guess is like our company email tags my location. So I really feel like all these social media apps just make it easier for people to like stalk you. Exactly. And, and I, right. Saying like it's so easy for especially like my generation, we're always sharing where our location is. Like, it's not a secret. Like, we'll be like, you can, even on Instagram, you can have, like, a location tag. And I know that um, in the beginning of stages of Snapchat, or, like, when it was pretty popular, if you didn't turn off your location on Snapchat, it would just be available. That's yeah. wild. hmm And that happened with Kylie Jenner. Get out. No way. Yeah, they found her. Like, they were, like, they found her and, like, brought her. And she was like, how did you know where I was? And um, there was also an episode of, Car- of Keeping Up with the Kardashians on it because she's always on Snapchat. And I guess either she didn't know that her location was on or something or but she was like the, all her sisters were like, we can see where she's at. So they pretended to prank her like they pranked her and pretend that they were a stalker. Oh, my God. See, I do not keep up with the Kardashians. Well, but that's crazy. Like, mm-hmm. I, that's. That's wild. If right. if some crazed fan wanted to really just do stuff, you know what I mean? Like do mm-hmm. something to her. I feel like social media is just kind of helping <laughs> helping people, helping people rob and stalk for Exactly, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, isn't that what happened when Kim when she got robbed in Paris? Um I I didn't hear about that. I know she got robbed in Paris. I don't know how they found her. I think she was um I think that I could be wrong because it was so long ago. I think she she showed what hotel she was in, and then she was showing off the not a bad way as she showed it to her. She she got it as a gift. Um, Kanye was got her like a diamond ring or something, something diamond, and she was like showing everyone. And then I guess the next day they, but I feel like it was planned though too. So see, that's that's crazy, and you know, like that it, that affects the way journalists do their job too. You remember back in the day when journalists used to like 
like go through people's garbage, camp out on the sidewalk across the right. street from other people. And they have to sit there and really do their homework to try and figure out where these celebrities are. Not not that that's something I would do. I was more of a go to the, you know, election, stuff like that, journalist. Or, mm-hmm. you know, do like your exposés and find out find out what politicians are hiding kind of journalist. I, I didn't stalk celebrities because... They just kind of seem like regular people to me. Right. So, but I really feel like social media is really kind of taking the investigation out of investigative reporting. Mm. Right. Because everyone's so open. You can just, everyone has their opinion. They can share, they can tweet their opinion anytime they want. It makes it, um, like you said, it's taking away the investigation part. Yeah, like, I really feel like I don't even have to, like, wonder or get, I don't need to chase down the president for a comment because, trust me, he'll tweet out his thoughts on whatever. Exactly. Right. And then, you know, when it comes to, like, like, oh, like, um, that situation with Julie Neeson, you remember when she got sued? Dude, no. I didn't have to do that much investigation because she tweeted out the entire thing, like her right. end of it. Right. Like the only real thing I had to do was check the court dockets to make sure what she was saying was right. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, I mean, it really kind of takes the legwork out. I don't know. In my opinion, it kind of takes the fun out of chasing down a story. I mean, yeah, it makes my job a little bit easier, but also, you know, they could say they can say pretty much anything. Yep, exactly. And I think another thing with social media too, on like the reader perspective, um, I believe like the main ways of getting information regarding what's happening in um, what's happening now in politics, what's happening in our in the in um, our social climate, like everything is shown through media like you can find an article straight on Facebook or you can find um the breakdown of a certain like there's this very popular thing I'm on Instagram now like threads um where it's a creative way and I feel like a way to really um make people aware of certain topics and they break it down and they put like a creative graphic with it and um one thing that was said was that graphics can, for example, there was a graphic, I mean, a thread on um, the what was going on in the U.S. Postal Service when it was um, when they were trying to defund it or when Trump was trying to defund it. And um, I feel like there was what the one person argued was that these these threads, all they're doing is giving awareness and they're not. They're not good because they don't allow for um, someone to like form an opinion or someone to um, someone to like form an opinion or someone to um, or what they what the person basically their biggest argument was you don't know what the person wrote is actually is factual like there's no um, you just you don't know if what they're saying is biased but I feel like that is the whole entire point of like of reading articles or um seeing something online you have to I think in my opinion as far as threads go it is a way for it's a way for information to get to the masses and to be even for me that that thread in particular about the U.S. Postal Service I wouldn't have known so much information without that thread but then it also falls on me to take that information and gather more info on it. exactly that's that's why i was so like adamant about that impressive situation mm-hmm. right if you don't know then right. like you say i'm speculating the words maybe or oh i'm not sure this is what i think those are watch words when you're expressing an opinion right. when you're like i heard blah 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 like Honey, it's if you want to be a journalist, you have to be responsible. Otherwise, you're just someone commenting on a thread. Right. The, or and people or your readers are going to believe you because exactly. you have a credibility attached to you being yeah. someone who's reporting or yeah, being the journalist. 
if you've got one point some odd million followers, then, you know, we shouldn't have to remind you that it's your responsibility to fact check. Right. Exactly. Like, you shouldn't like absolutely not. You shouldn't just take everything at face value. Mm-hmm. And then. Right. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are on a comment thread and you see something that seems legit, don't take it at face value. Definitely do some fact checking. Exactly. Because it's your, you have to have the ability to form your own opinion or to do the research and um, come up with your own, to yeah, form your own opinion and to realize and to fact check what is being stated in that thread on Instagram or that article on Facebook. Exactly. And then at the end, look at the Julie Neeson situation. I mean, Julie had all the information to back up her, what she was saying from videos to documents, court dockets, and she got sued for defamation and libel. Or no, no, I'm sorry, excuse me. She got sued for libel. I don't Mm -hmm. think she got sued for defamation, you know, but... They, whoever, the guy that sued her has to, he has to prove it. Uh It's a, the burden of proof is on him. And that's something very difficult to prove. But see, Julie did the responsible thing as a journalist and has all her research to back up what she's saying. Right. Anytime you make an assertion like that, you have to have the proof. Right. you remember that piece I did on Prop 22 mm-hmm. being bought and paid for by the big rideshare companies? I have I had all my research. I had screenshots. I went and I actually looked at the assembly bills when it was passed, dates. I looked at Prop 22. I called the law office that represents the big rideshare companies. Also, I can confirm what I was thinking and you remember when I sent you those screenshots where the yep. where the guys I was like dude look he's right here on LinkedIn he works for Uber this guy works for DoorDash exactly and you wouldn't you even told me like I'm almost done with the article but I have a inkling that like my intuition is telling me that like Uber and Rideshare knows about this like this is done by the Rideshare companies and you you did the research and you were correct. And you wouldn't post the article until you had all your research done. Exactly. And remember when I said, I suspect something about this investment company having right. having a stake in this. Mm-hmm. I refuse to put it down there because the guy told me to go F myself and hung up on me. So, you know, I had no way of confirming that what I suspected was correct. Exactly. So you know what? I didn't run with it because exactly. that's that's responsible journalism, period. So, yep. you know. Yeah, but it, um, I think it's almost an hour, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. We've we've definitely we definitely run to the hour. Like, I'll just say this. Basically, you know, always fact check. Right. When when you go to hire anyone, be polite. Yes. Just, you know, be polite. Don't. You know, don't be rude, be kind. And the other thing is, you know, when you read something on social media, don't don't take it at face value. Right. Fact check. Before you post something as fact, if you are one of the YouTubers or podcasters that comment on things, make sure that your stuff is well researched. And oh, don't stalk people. Stalk Oh, yeah, that's the biggest no-no from today. Yes. So if you could take away anything out of all those super important things, eat brick oven pizza from New York, nowhere else, right? Mm -hmm. Don't don't stalk people. Yes. And that's it? (laughs) Yeah, definitely. You guys should um, leave a comment on um, either our Twitter or our Instagram and let us know about your client. Well, shame. What is one time that you... Where you had an amazing customer or you it was your worst customer experience of your life. And don't forget, if you want someone to be canceled, email us at Juleen Moreno. That's J-U-L-E-E-N-M-O-R-E-N-O 
at mom is always right. That's W R I T E dot com. And yes. nomin- and nominate your person for being canceled. I, I only also- got I only got one email, Nietzsche. I got one email and it was you from did? my son. Yes. Oh, um, who did he cancel? He canceled me and you for being um for our cringe being over nine thousand. Oh my god, that one hurt. <laughs> That is earned. Um, also, I was gonna say, follow us on Twitter. We give, we do giveaways. Um, you'll have constant communication with us regarding our podcast updates. It's really our little hub for these. Um, it goes down in the PM. And uh, tune in. We'll be announcing the winner for our for our Amazon gift card giveaway. Yes, we were, we were supposed to announce that today. No, oh, you know, it's going to be on the next episode. Yeah, the the first. The first part of the next episode. There We're you go. Sorry. Sorry. All yeah, right. so you still have time to, maybe not at the, the time we record this, but definitely follow our Twitter. You still have time to enter the giveaway. Yes. You've got like, Ooh. you've got extra time. Yay. Woo. All right. Okay. All right. And that is it. It goes down in the PM. Yes. Good night. Night. Thank you.